The difficulty then is, is not in the thing itself. The difficulty is in semantics, in, in understanding. When we, when we think of the term know thyself, what is being referred to here is not the bi biological form that we take ourselves to be. It, and, it's, and it's not the chemistry. It's not the feelings, in other words, or the neurology, the, the, the thinking, the content of the mind. When, when, when we are invited or, or called upon to know ourselves, then we are, we are being invited to know that which is prior to, beyond, that which is behind form, behind the physical, behind the chemical, behind the, the, the neurological. So it's behind our physical shape, this body that we take ourselves to be, the person that we take ourselves to be, the, the feelings of this person and, and, and the thinking processes of this person. So what is being referred to is not that which is seen, but that which is seeing. So not the foreground, but the background, because seeing is in the background. And, and, and the examination gets a little bit complex here because we usually presume that the seeing is a function of the body. That awareness, in other words, is a function of the body. It is the body which is seeing. No, it's not because the body itself is seeing. What is seeing the body? What is aware of the body? What is aware of our feelings? We're not our feelings. Something, awareness is aware of feelings. Awareness is aware of our thoughts. What is aware? Awareness is the background. Thoughts are the foreground. Feelings are the foreground. The body is the foreground. In the same way that my car is in the foreground. And so is that tree. The tree is the foreground, awareness is the background. The car is now foreground, awareness is the background. My body now is foreground to this awareness background. And if I stay at the level of the body, if I try to feel into the body, I see that what looks solid on the outside is actually just energy, a flux of energy on the, in, on the inside. So am I this, is this the energy self that, that the masters are referring to? No, the energy is, something is also being aware of this energy. The energy is an experience in the same way that the body is an experience, in the same way that the car is a perceptual experience. The tree is a perceptual experience, but now the perceptual experience in going inward is being replaced by the, a sensorial experience. I'm sensing, perceiving outside, sensing inside. I'm now sensing the energy. But what is sensing? What is aware? Or oh, it's the body sensing itself. That may be. But what is aware of this sensing? And what is interpreting this sensing? The mind is interpreting the sensing of energy. The mind is interpreting the energy. But what is aware? And what is the mind on behalf of whom is the mind interpreting on behalf of awareness? Awareness is more primary, more fundamental. So there's the energy of the body. And then I become aware that there is the thinking content of the mind. So now the mind is in the foreground. The tree is in the foreground to this background awareness. The car is in the foreground to this background awareness. The body is in the foreground, is being seen by awareness. The energy of the body, foreground to awareness. The mind, thought, is in the foreground to awareness, which is prior. So this, it's this sort of behinding process, behinding, behinding, this decentration of attention, relaxing back, 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 stepping behind, behind the body, behind the energy, behind the thoughts, behind is the field, the fundamental field of awareness. And this is the self. This is the source. 
This is the nucleus, if you will. This is the sun that emits its rays of light outwardly. It's the same source that is yours, that is everybody else's, right? So when we talk then in short about this know thyself, we're not referring to know your physical form or your, or your feelings, chemistry, or your thoughts, neurology, or the person, which is a memory, accum accumulated, added unto me. There was a time when I didn't know I was even a baby, a person. I, my name was added unto me, my nationality is an add-on, my sex is an add-on. All of these things are add-ons and, and that, have, that have become the layers of my conditioned self that I take myself to be, that, I, that awareness identifies with. I, awareness steps into the foreground, out of the background and becomes the concepts, the feelings and the body, the person. That's the power of awareness. It can become, it becomes an animal, it becomes a tree. It is this, it is that which calls itself a human, I've read somewhere, is not a human. I think it's, it's attributed to the, to the great Hindu mystic Nisargadatta. That which says I'm human is not human. And this is, this is that, that non-human, whatever it is, self experience awareness that you know as awareness is what aristotle or socrates referred to when he said know thyself or when was said you know the unexamined life is not worth living the life examine that life that life is self that life is self that self is awareness that awareness is that I am that, I am that, you know, which is behind. I'm not this, I am that. So, just a few words about that because I was listening a little bit earlier to a YouTube video uh, and the difficulty that was, that was, that the, a question I was having in trying to wrap his mind around this idea of self as a formless reality. Self is just awareness. It's not the body that is aware, it is awareness that's aware of the body. The body is the foreground to the background of awareness. The body goes to sleep at night, but awareness is still there. Awareness in deep sleep, awareness in dream state. How, how else would you know that you are dreaming? <laughs> You wake up and you say, I, I had dreams. How do you know? You're, you're sleeping. If you are the body, then you're sleeping. You shouldn't know anything. But awareness is still there in, in, in the dreamless, in the dream state. And awareness is still there in the dreamless state, as is pointed out to us by the masters of Orient. And then the body wakes up and awareness identifies with the body and says, I woke up. No, I didn't wake up. I didn't, never went to sleep. Awareness does not sleep. That which says I am human is non-human. It's very difficult to wrap our minds around because we have been identifying as form, as biology, as chemistry, as neurology, you know, forever. How do you question that? We, we, were, we were raised into this, into this narrative about ourselves and about the reality of being. But, but we live in such a crazy time today that we are being called upon by the prevailing, the prevailing power of, what do you want to call it, God? Or we're being called upon to know ourselves at, in a way which has been, might have been just the exclusive domain of the few mystics hanging out in their dark caves, contemplating the, the, the eternal. Uh, today, the age of the mystic masses has arrived. People on the street are having an entirely different conversation than we did in the past. You know, 20, 30 years ago, we were talking about these things and people were calling us crazy. But today, you know, out of the cave, onto the street and into the office and everyday life, our conversation is just crazy, right? So we're being called upon by nature of reality, by source, 
in order to, to know ourselves beyond the body, beyond our emotions, beyond our neurology, to know ourselves as awareness aware, aware aware, as a standalone fact of source. As a standalone facts of source, we have to accept the I, we have to accept its eternity. It's the body and the mind and chemistry that exists in space and time. It doesn't mean we, often they are called illusion. It doesn't mean that they are not real, but they are relatively real. But truth is not relative. Truth is eternal. Time does not qualify reality. What I mean by that, just because a, a mirage, let's say, exists in the desert for half an hour, it doesn't mean it's real. It can exist for a billion years. It's still a freaking mirage. The same thing, 80, 90 years of physical, biological, emotional, neurological experience does not mean it, it was real. They, they, we're raised with this idea that I am here. No, I'm not here. How can, if I'm here, I should be eternally here. But the body cannot be the, cannot be I then because it isn't eternal. Truth can't just be truth for about half an hour or a billion years. Truth is truth is truth is truth or not. And the miracle is that you are the eternal. I am the eternal existing in that which is relative to space and time. The body exists in space and time, but in the body, so to speak, because it's not in the body, the body is in awareness, because the body is aware, appearing to awareness. There is a timeless reality. And that's what is known and what is called, and what is referred to know thyself not self as the physiological biological chemical neurological being that i take that awareness takes itself to be know thyself as that awareness and it's the same awareness and that's where we are one often you hear you know we're all one and we think that by that is meant that the bo my body and your body and the, not the world of form not the world of form no they were not one at there, this is diversity. We are one as in, in the same way that, that the electricity that powers up the toaster and the electricity that powers up the, the fridge and what have you is the same electricity. But the fridge and the toaster, they're, they're not, you know, the fridge is not in the toaster. So, know thyself. That sh we need to clear up that confusion that, that the command here, the invitation, the call is to know self as formless, non-physical. It isn't physical. It's not biological. It's not local. It's not geographical. It's not here and there. My body is here as opposed to there. But consciousness, awareness, what I am is not. It's not local. It's not non-local. You cannot refer you know, specifications and qualifications and dimensions that refer to space and time, to that which exists beyond space and time. And you cannot use language and mind in order to refer to that which is beyond language and mind. You know, it's like there is a saying by John Bennett, one of Gurdjieff's students. He says, you, um, you cannot ascribe to the realm of knowledge what does not belong to the realm of knowledge. You cannot refer a human, so to speak, attributes to that which does not belong to the realm of the human. There is something that is not a human in you and I. There is, we exist, so to speak, at the juncture between spirit and matter. And that awareness is the is the outcome. Awareness, aware, aware. From the tree, to the car, to the body, to the energy, to the feelings, to the emotions, to the mind. And then one step further in the background, collapse, keeps letting the elastic band of attention to relax. One more step and you land in the bull's eye. Awareness. But it isn't a thing. 
can't see, it doesn't have sense, you can't recognize it by physical features or this or that, smell it. Five senses don't work there in that. It's just a standalone fact of eternity, aware, aware. Characterized, as the Hindus tell us, by Satchit Ananda, consciousness, being, awareness, bliss. Satchit Ananda, being, awareness, bliss. Home, fulfillment. Good luck wrapping your mind around that. It won't work. Step behind, from the foreground to the background. Keep decentrating from your concentrated state. Take care, my friends. This is Bassam. Let me know if this was at all instrumental in helping you to leverage a greater understanding of what this idea of know thyself means. Bye-bye for now.